Okay, Kings of War players, this is a battle report of the Order of the Green Lady vs Salamanders. This is my call to arms for round 5 game. Hello there! I like to watch battle reports to get better at games. So I started making short, summarized battle reports that focus on learning points. So welcome to my channel, Newbie Dice. Do like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you enjoy my videos. Welcome back, so let's talk about my list um, in this Green Lady list, one of the changes I made for this game was that I brought two unicorns and to in order to do that I upgraded my one of my Pegasus into the unicorn and to cater for the extra point cost I have to drop my men and arm retainer hordes into regiments and I have some points left over for some spare items. So it's not my favorite change because the men and arms dropping from hot to uh, to regiments mean uh, from being able to take one charge, uh, they might die to one charge now. But in return, I get a uh, unicorn, which are individuals, which means uh, they can uh, see anywhere they like and charge charge things. And with two sets of lightning bolts, I have a better chance of taking out chaff. Right? That also uh, it just happens to bring one more inspiring source to my list. And yeah, the downside is uh, for Unicorn, they are quite pricey for the the multitude of things they can do. So I tend to take them as cheap as I can. So I replaced the heal with just Lightning Bolt. And I did not take Flying on it because uh, to me it just cost more. It's already speed 10 on the ground, so I don't really need it. And losing individual is not exactly a good thing all the time. <coughs> so my opponent's list, uh, my round 5 opponent is uh, Ryan Mansell. And this is a amazing salamanders list the first thing that pops out is the three troops of uh, ancients and tyrants are amazing offensively because they do uh, deal 10 damage on average to a defense 5 unit which uh, most other uh, large infantry or similar profiles deal 8 damage but they deal 10 damage on average because they have that 30 attacks hitting on force right and yeah he brought rhinosaur cavalry regiments for screens and there's that clan lot on fire drake so this is our deployment. The numbers represent uh, when we drop the unit down. So he, I started with the water elementals in the middle. He started with the ceremonial guard. Now the ceremonial guard is a big problem to my list because my thunderous charge and my flyers are all going that to get hit by the phalanx and I'll have a tough time dealing with it. So my only two units that can do, do fight it normally are both deployed in the middle. But of course, uh, even the elemental hordes, they, they are hitting on force, they are not going to get lots of damage in. So I do am trying to rely on getting flanks and uh, trying to win one flank or the other, while both pretty heavily deployed on the left. So I was thinking, mm, counting it down, he has that two tyrant horde and the two rhinosaurs and the fan lord. So I think he's more, more things deployed on the left and it will be a tough challenge to punch through. So I deployed quite heavily on the right as well. So whereas he's quite light on the right side, and I hope to quickly punch through the right and swing around to the middle. Uh, one special thing to take note about this map is that this uh, building here is only height 4, which means my beast of nature can see over it. So uh, I won the deployment row to place units first, but that also means I chose the top. While he, uh, I was hope I chose the top because I was hoping this building and the fence over here will provide more of a hindrance to him. He won the initiative row and chose to go first because it's uh, invade, right? And he immediately took advantage of this forest. He pushed his things up near the forest, but I can't charge him. And the moment I tow into the forest, he would be able to charge out. So that's what uh, he pretty much did over here. And then this ancients over here, uh, it was deployed diagonally, so it went uh, to assist the right side. Because he did see, if you look at the numbers of my deployments in the earlier round, I did deploy all this at the end, right? Is my drop number 9, 10, 11, 12. Only the last drop, the Pegasus, was back here. Right? And then he deployed all this uh, near the end. So the Ancients was, uh, I guess he was guessing whether to support the middle or the right side. So now that I have more on the right side, he started to march forward to, to assist the right side. So I shuffled everything up. Uh, things to note is I did not step into the forest. My stuff on the right is ready to charge everything on the right. Okay, on the left, I did this uh, little trick here. I moved my redemption slightly to the left 
so that it actually protects the frontage. The clan lock couldn't charge into the front or into this uh, beast of nature at all, right? And what I did not uh, do, which I should have done, is that I should have angled my beast of nature a little bit more because right now where it's standing, it's front up, it's like this. So if you notice all this off the board is wasted, line of sight, okay? So if I tilted my beast of nature more, uh, probably something like this, I'll be able to see here and see a little bit more here. Okay, and because of this, he exploited by uh, landing his uh, fire drake somewhere here. So let's see his response. So he's landed his fire drake over here, as you can see. Okay, over on the right side. Okay, he angled his ceremonial guard a little bit because my piece of nature can see it and he was at the flank. So he tilted it a little bit so that the piece of nature is in the front. Uh, the, the right side, the ancients are... Uh, aggressively move forward with this uh, two 90 degree angles here to be able to threaten flanks on each other. And over here in the middle of the forest, this uh, rhinosaur and tyrants tip, dipped into the forest which uh, forces things to happen a little bit. So if I don't charge it, the rhinosaur would charge out at the things behind the forest and there's a lot of things there. I don't think I can back out threat range. It is a 14 inch threat and the tyrants did have a potential 15 inch threat with the all charge D3, which is nothing, which is not something that I want to hope that he don't get anyway. So, uh, what else? Yep, the cannot land here. So this this thing over here. So this was the mistake he made. Um, the rhinosaurs angled a little bit, and because of that, the tyrants couldn't be completely flushed behind the rhinosaurs, and he exposed the left side a little bit. Let me draw that out. Okay, over here. Yeah. So he thought that only the Beast of Nature could charge in, but actually it was within threat range of the Redemption Knights as well, because this is the closest edge, it's pretty close. Okay, so that's uh, exactly what I did. So I charged the Redemption Knights in, and it will put it on 11 wounds on average, so I needed 6 twice, which I'm not fully comfortable with, so I added a Pegasus in as well to contribute about 1 or 2 more damage to make it more of a certainty. Right, so I did kill it and I turned around, and unfortunately, uh, based on this angle, I could only charge the rhinosaurs next round. Okay, I charged the piece of nature in to deal some damage over here, uh, to to prevent any uh, move to lock the rhinosaurs in place, and the Pegasus flew 20 inches to block the ancients from flanking the the piece of nature. Okay, my water elemental regiment charged the uh, fire drake, dealing above average damage, and the thing is. Right now, the fire drake would deal 7 damage on average to these uh, water elementals, 6 to 7 damage, and that would mean you need uh, 7. Uh, only once, because I have no inspiring the unicorn uh, ran off, but only once, you only need a 7 once to kill it. And the other uh, and the other thing is my green knights over here, uh, it was facing the clan lord, but only slightly, because it also wanted to face the rhinosaur and the tyrants over here to have options to charge out later. So in hindsight, I think I should have faced the clan knot a little bit more so that I, I could threaten to pin it in place. Yeah, so I was a little bit greedy trying to see more things and in the end, uh, not being able to do much. So it's preset over here. So now uh, in the center, so I had to charge the earth elementals in to pin the rhinosaurs in place. I did not want to charge the green knights in as well because if I do, the rhinosaurs would die and the tyrants could charge the uh, the green knights and uh, potentially one shot it. So I didn't want that to happen. So uh, because the earth elementals charged in, I have to stop the ceremonial guard. Okay, if not, you flank the earth elementals. So the water elementals charge in. So now the, the number is at this precarious number because uh, when the ceremonial guard counter charge, you deal me 10 damage and you need a 7 twice to route me on average. Which is not uh, out of the realm of uh, poss possibility. It's uh, still quite possible, but I was hoping that they would at least hold one round, right? Over on the right side, I double charged the ancients. Uh, on average dice, I'll only need uh, 5 twice to route it, but I dealt uh, 1 below average and I did not get the 6 twice to route it. So uh, a good chance of 1 rounding the Ancients uh, in the end failed and, I got, uh, and I'm still stuck here. 
Okay, if I have Rotter, I'll turn around and be able to face off the other Ancients, which I'll eventually win this fight, right? And then I could start to threaten the center. The Unicorn over here stopped the Ancients from flanking or rear charging whatever's over here, and the Foot Soldiers moved up. Okay, next round. So, a bunch of things happened. So, first thing is the Clan Lord uh, did kill off the Water ele Elementals. And he needed to overrun 3, 3 plus to get out of the arc of the Green Knights, and he got it, he got a 4. Okay, um, the middle, these results here are quite expected, the ones on the lower left. The Rhinosaurus hit back for some damage, and Attacko hit the Unicorn for 1 damage. And these uh, Ceremonial Guards one rounded the Water Elementals, which was pretty unfortunate. Uh, Odds were in my favor, but it was not. It was just slightly uh, above average rolls for him. And then, for here, the ancients charged the beast of nature to ground it. The Lichilidon, uh flank charge, but hindered into the Forsaken Horde to ground it. Okay, so both of these flyers are grounded. So even if the Forsaken wasn't grounded, he placed this Lichilidon over here. So that uh, the Forsaken couldn't rear charge, uh, flank charge the Ceremonial Guard because he couldn't land. Okay, Inchants only dealt one damage to the Pegasus. So my response, um, let's look from left to right. So I killed off the Rhinosaurus, and then I double charged the Green Knights and the Pegasus into the Ancients. Now, okay, so on average I'll need six plus twice to route it, and unfortunately I failed to get it. So now I'm having a problem here. I killed off the Rhinosaurus, but this Earth Elementals would go down to this double charge and the Tyrants would turn around and face my Knights while my Knights still had to deal with the Ancients one more round. So that was uh, pretty sad for me. And what else? I, I charged the Druid into the uh, into the Ceremonial Guard because if I do get that lucky 5 plus to hit 5 plus to wound then that would ground the Ceremonial Guard and then uh, my Earth Elementals would survive one round. Anyway, uh, if I healed this for 1 damage, you would still go down to the double charge anyway. Um, yeah, and if I fail to wound, uh, there's nothing that's gonna hit my Druid anyway. So Now, um, over on the right side, guess what? Uh, this double charge that had a good chance of killing off the ancients, right, failed the first time and the second time it double one. So I double charged it again because I was afraid that the beast of nature charging alone might not do enough damage, right? And then uh, I got fourteen, which was make it, making it devastated. But I wrote double one, so I'm the the plan to quickly kill off the right now got stuck for two turns already, and the. Uh, the Unicorn decided to charge the Lachilidon instead because he, I could do one or two wounds and if I roll a little bit hot, I could get the Lucky Wave on it to stop it from punching my Order of the Forsaken. Right, so in, instead I used the men to block up the Ancients because I figured with the Hindered Charge, uh, they'll deal 3 to 4 damage on average. Even after 2 rounds of 3 to 4 damage, uh, I would st still be at eight, 7 or 8 wounds and he'll still need 7 twice to kill it. So I thought the men had a very good chance of uh, surviving two rounds, right? It could even take three rounds before it go down. So uh, in return, let's look at these, uh, this uh, left side over here. The clan lot turned around, stayed out of Ark of the Redemption, and the attacker shot down the Beast of Nature. He had three wounds on it, I think. Uh, well, if it took three more wounds on average from uh, attacker, and uh, three more wounds on average, two to three wounds on average from the flame, you still need nine twice to, to die, I think, and, and he got it. So, uh, no, eight twice, seven, eight or nine twice to get it, right? Depends on how much damage he dealt. Uh, and he got it too, wow. So, uh, the nerve roll was just slightly in his favor and slightly uh, not in my favor, right? He's getting that seven, seven to nine twice while I couldn't get the five to six twice. So it was a little bit frustrating for me and furthermore I got that uh, uh, double ones on, on the snake eyes on the right side. 
So what happened, and his uh, my unicorn only had one damage on it, the ancients count, turn around and counter charge the unicorn. Well, it should average about uh, 3 damage, right? That would put it on 10 twice to kill it, and he got it as well. So, wow, I, all the nerf tests were going his way in this game. Uh, very sadly, and uh, I'm at the point where it's very difficult for me to recover at, at this stage. And he still got it, and he turned around to face my green knights after it's done. So then there's one mis uh, sort of mistake here. He killed off the earth elementals with the double charge, and then he turned around to face this way. Then he did the combat on the right, which was the uh, the mistake, sort of. Okay, so the ancients were devastated, but he flew his phoenix over to cast the heal, and got it uh, just uh, out of devastated range. So it's hitting at full power, but he failed to deal damage to the beast of nature. That would mean that I did have a flank charge, a uh, rear charge option on the uh, ceremonial guard. Okay, now the second Lachilidon charged into the fray because he uh, didn't need to guard the flank of the Forsaken uh, from the Forsaken Horde anymore, so he charged in. And they're both hindered, so they are both chipping slowly away at these uh, Forsaken Horde. Okay, so at this point, I, I was deciding whether I want to charge into the rear of the Ceremonial Guard because even on hot dice, I'll still need like a 7 to route, but that but only a 5 to waver, right? There's a waver value and he doesn't have fury. So in the end, I still stuck to my original plan. I thought that I could still win the grind on the right side, but on hindsight, that was a folly. I should have just charged out because after charging out, I do have a decent chance of taking out this ceremonial guard and then I can threaten the tyrants. So, but instead, I stuck to the plan here and it's gonna just get more and more stuck because of now there's two Lachilidons. Like, the Ancient is still there, and now the, the Phoenix could come in next round, which I discovered later on after I was planning my turn. So uh, on the left side, I killed off the... I killed off the... the what do you call this? The Ancients, and then I faced this way. Uh, I faced this way so that whatever charged it would be like sent backwards towards his half of the table, so that he still has to have the task of crossing the table, right? Um, the Redemption Knight just backed up so that it keeps the uh, Fire Drake in its front arc. So it, the Fire arc, the fire Drake keep just dancing around my uh, Redemption Knight, which was pretty annoying. Okay, and then uh, over here on the right side, I did finally kill the Ancients. Uh, but with these two Lakildons still here, I, it stuck my Forsaken in place, I turn around my Beast of Nature and then I realize, oh dear, um, the Phoenix will charge into the flank of the Beast of Nature. But uh, on hindsight, at the end of the game, it didn't really matter. My units were already stuck as long as the Phoenix come in, I would not be able to untangle out of this mess. These uh, men at arms backed up so that you receive another hindered charge from the Ancients. Hoping that it will do on average three to four damage, and that would mean uh, seven twice, seven or eight twice to route my man at arms. And unfortunately, he got it. Uh, I think he probably dealt above average damage and uh, routed it. Right. Um, the phoenix went into the flank of the piece of nature, but uh, doesn't really matter anyway. They're just gonna uh, punch at each other. The piece of nature dealing more, but Phoenix regenerating it, so the, the, the battle would probably draw out forever. The two uh, the two Lachilidon still pinning the Forsaken Horde in place, unfortunately. And let's see, over on the left side, the the Ancients, not the Ancients, the Tyrants did kill the, the Green Knights on one charge which was uh, on average needed 7 once and he got it as well and yeah so now I'm only left with this unit over here and I was hoping to preserve it okay because if I still want at least it's 3 unit strength right so I was still trying to preserve it so the picture was badly taken I, uh, I did uh, I did uh, move out, out of the charge range and I'm and initially, I just placed myself uh, out of 12 inch of the the tyrants. 
because I forgot that they have uh, wild charge and uh, when my opponent pointed it out, uh, thanks uh, to Ryan, I, I positioned myself differently so that it's out of charge range. Uh, actually, he needed a 3 on the wild charge or 5-6, right? But he didn't get it. So over here on the right side, I killed the Lechilidon finally. And I turn around, but now because I'm surrounded on three sides, the Forsaken Horde, you would get definitely a front, a flank, and a rear charge from each of these units. So I, I presented the rear to the Phoenix because it would charge in hindered. Uh, if I presented a rear to the Ancients, I think that would hurt more. So, but the three triple charge did kill off the Forsaken Horde, so I'm running out of units at this point. And so, because the Tyrants has already turned to face away because it's marched towards the opponent, my side of the board, right? So now my uh, Redemption Knights are looking down to threaten a charge onto it. And yeah, um, the Fire Drake and the Attacker keep shooting it off. You can see that it's on 6 wounds right now. It does have regen to heal back some of it. And I didn't take the top of 7, but basically he continues shooting at me. The Tyrants march out, of, march out of threat range and the Ancients march forward to get the unit strength across the board and at this point I could try to preserve points um, I, or I could just charge in if on average dice it would not be in my favor but if there are crazy dice rolls I might still be able to get a tie if I get some crazy dice rolls to kill the ceremonial guard and the unicorn killing of the ancients, but of course that did not happen, and so it's a loss for me, and it's a big win for my opponent. So uh, at the end of the game, I thought, yeah, the dice didn't go my way this game, but uh, other than the other than the snake eyes, I think it was just slightly below average on the nerf rolls. Uh, While well for him it was uh, average or slightly above. And yeah, but I found that the critical parts of the list of, of this battle was me failing to take out the ancients, right? On the on this side of the board, on the left right side of the board. And that green knights plus unicorn charging failed to take out that ancients that needed to go down so that the green knights could charge the tyrants. So those the combine of those two ancient troops not going down uh, really swung the game out of my favor so sorry uh, it really swung the game out of my favor and yeah the ancient troops are real good value for 120 points and it has the potential of taking so much damage and charges and still not go down so uh, when i counted out i had 800 over points uh, deployed on my right side and at the start, you only had that two ancients and the Lachilidon, it was only like 300, 300 over points, right? And my 800 points failed to take out that 300 points, although there's some uh, lucky or unlucky rolls for my part, but that was a huge gain in his favor. And in the end, he won the battle, right? Of course, uh, one more Lachilidon and one more Phoenix came in, but that only brought it to 600 points to against 800 points. Yeah, so so it was very effective the points efficiency was there and yeah the initial charge of the beast plus the forsaken was what um almost 500 points of units charging in against 120 points and my odds of taking out wasn't like 90 percent as well i needed five twice same thing for the ancient against the green knights the green knights and the unicorn charging in is 300 over points and still, uh, it was not good odds of taking it out. So, ancients are great value, but they are slow. So, we, I need to exploit the speed, right? So, learning points, don't be lazy. I'm talking about my piece of nature at the start of the game. I could have angled it better to cover more parts of the board. Points efficiency, do remember uh, to do look at it in a uh, number of points you allocate to get the job done and uh, Ryan did a great job just 300 over points initially got the job done of holding down that flank when I thought that I would uh, crush it easily right as an alpha striking list you are paying a points tax on uh, having the speed to charge first as well 
but you do have to balance uh, points efficiently C to have a uh, point efficient hammers not just fast ones uh, unfortunately in uh, order the green lady list right um, I'm looking at the list again the order the green lady the army list uh, there's not much in terms of a very hitty uh, large element uh, large infantry horde right the earth and water elementals are only crushing one and they only hit on four so they're not very fighty so which brings me to the next point so if i can't bring that point efficiency so i need to consider getting more chances of uh, flanking to double and triple the efficiency of my units so uh, if i were to rebuild the list again i, I i'm trying to i'm still figuring it out i want to squeeze in a third beast of nature Yes, uh, Beast of Nature is 200 points for only 7 attacks, but with its nimble, this medium speed, medium threat flyer, it, uh, if it gets flanked, it's still going to bring a lot of hurt. And I do need to get that flank to, to win the Thunderous Charge, uh, to, to win the, against Phalanx, because Thunderous Charge and Cavalry and Flyers are just going to get uh, hit by Phalanx. So lastly, uh, prepare to handle nerf results of uh, these ranges. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, sometimes 4 and sometimes 10. So you might get the low end of the spectrum while your opponent gets the high end of the spectrum if you are able to uh, handle this variance of the of the average dice results. Uh, things would look better in your favor. If I were to look at it again, I might... Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'll see if I can uh, still make better uh, tactical decisions. That will be able to handle this variance of dice rolls, you know, uh, worse in my favor and better in the opponent's favor. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this battle report. And this is the round five of uh, Call to Arms season four. And it's a crushing defeat for the order, the Green Lady. I'll be going into round six. We'll see how I do. And if you enjoyed this battle report, do hit the like button right now and uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to be notified of my future videos. This is Paige from Singapore signing off.